it's time for our celebrity snacks yes. to go along with mm. all the drinks. Good morning to you, Marissa. Great, great to be with you both. Uh, that it's, suit jacket thank is... Thank you. Thank you. That is awesome. He always I have it. to say, I, I, uh, I'm jealous of the turtleneck. <laughs> You're rocking it, man. All right, so there's a new movie opening up uh, this Friday called Amsterdam. We had Christian Bale on the show earlier this week. Uh, we talked about him singing with Taylor Swift, who's also in the film as well. Uh, it's directed by David O. Russell, who did films like Silver Linings Playbook and Three Kings and uh, Joy. He did uh, a, gr a lot of great films. And this is a new one. It basically deals with three best friends who witness a murder and become the prime suspects while also trying to uncover something about American history that ends up being very impactful. Uh, and I spoke to uh, Mike Myers. And I got to tell you, uh, over the years, I've had the opportunity to speak with a lot of comedians that I grew up with, like Jim Carrey and Mike Myers. And they're incredibly deep and thought-provoking thinkers. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that I didn't think that they would be, but you expect like a comedy, like you expect like Mike Myers to be like Austin Powers or Jim Carrey to be like Ace Ventura. Uh, but when you actually interview these guys, there's a spiritual element to the mm -hmm. way they answer their questions that I've always found really interesting and relatable. Um, so we actually got into a pretty cool conversation here about this difference in life between what you need and what you want, which is a big theme in the film. So I spoke to Mike Myers about that. Here's a little clip from the film and a part of our conversation. These are dangerous times. You be careful. I'm about to do something that could cost me my life. The cuckoo is in the nest and the cuckoo is about to be trapped. Cuckoo. I love this uh, theme in the film of choice versus need and yeah. this concept of, like, I need my wife versus I love my wife and I choose my wife. Right. Um, what does that line mean to you on a personal level? Just, uh, just in general, like the, verse, the point of choice versus need. A friend of mine works with people who are addicted. Mm -hmm. And he said that um, when a want becomes a need, you have an addiction. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's levels of attachment to the outcome. I think of all of this as a maturation process. You know what I mean? Uh, when you're a kid, you have no sense of time. I want it, I want it now. It's not coming, it's never coming. As you get older, you go, I want this. It will come at its time. If it doesn't happen, I'm still okay. And, and in the movie, you see those levels of maturity in conflict. So fascists are, we want it, we want it now. Uh, you hurt me, I hurt you. It's all very low in the, in the chakric path, you know what I mean? Democracy is a much higher uh, <laughs> frequency of the chakric yeah. journey. Yeah, Mike Myers, I'm telling you, I've had maybe three conversations with him over the years. I, I love talking to him. Him and Jim Carrey oh, are, yeah. so, and they're really into that element. Um, but anyway, so I know it's a deeper conversation. You probably expect Mike Myers to be Austin Powers, they're just not like that in terms of like these comedians. I remember interviewing Eddie Murphy and I love Eddie Murphy so much. He is equally a deeper thinker yeah. as well. Like mm -hmm. very dramatic, very into his conversation. So I, I always loved interviewing comedians. So Amsterdam hits theaters on Friday. If you missed my interview with uh, Christian Bale talking about singing with Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. you can go to fox5dc.com. But I know our buddy Chris is about to share That's something else. That's a broad us. range yeah, that you're giving us. A lot Taylor going Swift. on here. A lot going yeah, on here. Yeah, I love what he said too. It's very uh, profound yeah. about wants versus needs. Yeah. And just also being patient with right. time and life and we how it unfolds. We try to control everything. Yeah. And, and I think I'm 38 years old and I've, I've really come to a lesson now in my life. Like, you don't need to control everything. You control what you can control, which is yourself and mm -hmm. what you put it. in your body and what you put in your mind. Um, but trying to control others, what they think about you and uh, trying to make sure something happens at the exact moment yeah. if it does. And if it doesn't, you think you're a failure. Well, Nelson Mandela has that great quote. It's like, I don't lose, I either win or learn. Yes. You know, wow. so I think uh, I, I think it's very interesting. All that thematics come back mm -hmm. to reality, so. It's always amazing that you can get that level of conversation <laughs> from usually a short, yeah. Interview. Thank I you. love that. And yeah, yeah, I mean, those interviews are four minutes, uh, so it's just it is hard sometimes to get to to find a connection with someone yeah. like that. And uh, yeah, so thank you for saying it's that. A gift. Yeah, and that's why he's Kevin McCarthy, the one and that. only. All right, <laughs> thank you. that means a lot uh, to me. Wow. <laughs> Let's talk thank about J Lo now. She's deep too. People don't give her a lot of credit. Oh, I love J Lo. I love her. Deep. I've interviewed her a bunch. She's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but she's also no stranger to weddings. Let's let's tell the truth mm. about it. But her latest may be the craziest one yet. Producer Chris is in the control room with all the details on that. This 
looks straight. Yeah. Shot. So I'm. I, I, listen, I have no doubt that she's very deep, but yeah. we are not going to talk about any chocolate <laughs> journey. We're not going to get this into particular part of the <laughs> Just giving you guys a heads up or where we are along it. We are talking about JLo, though, and we are talking about weddings. And as we know and as we've joked about, she is no stranger to them. But we are not talking about her two weddings to Ben Affleck or her other three. We are talking about her new movie. You see the poster right there. It's a romantic comedy adventure. It's called Shotgun Wedding. It's set to premiere on Prime Video next year. However, the first trailer just dropped yesterday. And this is a direct quote from one Twitter use user. It's hard to predict the absolutely bonkers turn it takes about a minute in. Yeah. Look. Uh, you look so much better than the rest hey, of hey, us. Chris, I think Chris, 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 Chris is it's slightly it lower Chris, than the right Chris. Chris. I mean, Chris, you taught me. Something doesn't feel right. All right, so you see a little, little glimpse of that trailer right there. You may have also seen it trending on Twitter yesterday. You can catch the movie itself premiering January 27th on Prime Video. However, I do have an honest question for you guys, and yeah. it's between uh, the number of weddings that she's actually had and the number of times she's played a bride in a movie. How many times do you think J-Lo has worn a wedding dress? In a movie? I you knew oh, that was coming. You're, okay. com you're combining them all or just, just all the movies? Them, all of them combined. Movie and life? Okay. okay. Well, Three. Movie. I'm going to go with nine. Was nine. she married and made in Manhattan? Yes. I uh, she, she did was. wear a dress. I know that much. Okay. And she just did that movie with Owen Wilson? Yeah, yes. Owen Wilson. Yes. Did we see the marriage in enough? No, we did oh. not. Wait, we wait, did wait. not, but I thought about enough. Jersey Girl? But is she already Ooh. married in Jersey Girl? I don't remember. I know. Now. What's your guess? What's your guess? Ooh. I said nine. Um, you just have to guess. Uh, Real life movie. Six. Six. Ten. Six. Six or seven. All right, Chris. I, I'm going to get started on my research while you guys <laughs> continue. <laughs> your I don't have the answer for you, unfortunately. I want to know the answer. I well, I'm going to. The research team's back here. Okay, okay yeah, yeah. Get, started get, the, get hard to work on that on that research, please. Yeah. All right, we'll do. I don't like that one bit. You don't like it or not. That was good. He got us all. He did, he did. All right, former First Lady Michelle Obama is hitting the small screen, embarking on a new adventure with Waffles and Mochi. So Waffles and Mochi Restaurant. Uh, the duo encourages children to learn more about healthy eating and just how to eat more mindfully. She's joined by award-winning chefs and new friends. Take a look. Hey, friends. Hey, hey y'all. Hey, this is What's going on? It's not what's going on. It's who's coming in. Oh, hello. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> this has to be the best meal ever. Our mission, should we choose to eat it? The series hits Netflix October 17th. I've always wanted to interview Michelle Obama. Oh my gosh, I, we all. I, 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 listen, I, I, I want to go to her yeah, tour. I know. I've, I've always wanted to. I, mean, I, I recently spoke with uh, former you know, First Lady uh, Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was just thinking, I'm like, how cool would that be to talk to Michelle Obama one oh, day? Sorry. I mean, just like, I was like, that would be so awesome. But over yeah. dinner. Yeah, over <laughs> dinner. Over dinner would be amazing. I, I, I did meet President Obama in a very strange, uh, interesting coincidence, but it happened. I've never met Michelle Obama. How so. did you meet him in a I was I, okay. I, so I was at Andrews Air Force Base years ago, about to go up in a plane to do a stunt plane trick, um, and I was doing it for a radio show. And we were on the runway, and all of a sudden, the guy gets a message saying, "You need to go back to the hangar uh, because nobody can take off right now." Uh -huh. And then I and then I go back, and I'm like, "Can I just ask what's going on?" They're like, "Yeah, the president's about to take off and go to Phoenix." <sighs> So I was like, well, how long are we going to be sitting here? A couple hours. I'm like, can I go watch him take off? Mm -hmm. So we go over to this thing area called the Distinguished Visitors Lounge, I think it was called. And we like waited along this line. A lot of military people were to the left of me. And Obama, you know, President Obama comes in, the three helicopters, you don't know which one he's on, Marine One. He lands, gets off, sees us, comes over and, and shakes every single person's hand. And the thing I remember the most about it was he said, thank you for your service to every single individual yeah. person that was from the military. But he was so engaged in the moment that when he got to me, I'm not, I'm not military, he didn't say thank you for your service, obviously, but I mean, to meet all those people down the line and then like mm. know, okay, now I'm at a person who's not military. I know that he's the president and that's something that's like seems obvious, but I just think about all those people he was, was meeting. very generous and, to do. And then the AP picture of it is my hand with my Adidas jacket. Oh, I can see your hand. Yeah, and then, and then him like, yeah, him like looking Make at sure him. it's free. Yeah, and, and then I watched him. He I, does. <laughs> when he took off, it was so cool yeah. watching him get up onto the Air Force One Air and Force watching one. it take off. And then, oh my God, the craziest part was that they had. I, 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 I have to rap, I have to rap. Chris is gonna come in here and get it.